the original pieces that we made were a little bit cracked and they were swollen and like really warped and deformed and there was also a little bit of discoloration. So what we three did, we worked with uh, three wood species. I have large and spruce. Yeah, and five. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, we tried to like do some product development and like improve the program that we used to press the the samples. And uh, we had some like main purposes. So we had these four little points that we wanted to like concentrate on when we were improving the quality. So we wanted to reduce the cracking inside all of the samples because obviously if you have a lot of cracking you can't test them at all. And also reduce the discoloration with the terrace board which was the large samples. Uh, terrace boards, friction patterns, that was something that happened because we had like too much heat on the press and then it was burning on the surface so it was a bit ugly looking. We wanted to get rid of that. And then improved adhesion and smoothness with surface treatment, which was, I think, with pine, uh, the pine samples, the water glass, because we had some trouble with that also in the earlier workshop. And eliminate finally any warping or swelling after the process. And <coughs> we had some pilot testing. We made some, like, well, we tested, we had some extra pieces, so we worked with them and we tried to figure out what is the best way to make these hot pressing programs. And uh, as it says here on the bottom, we decided that uh, moisture extraction was probably the first and most important thing that we should work with to get as much moisture out of the wood if, uh, in the beginning stages of the process. So when it's a dryer, it doesn't swell afterwards. And uh, the program, we also decided that it should be based on heat transition rather than set timing. The first ones we had, we had just these minutes of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, this pressure, that pressure, and we saw that it didn't work. So we made it like, made it so that we had um, thermo thermometers or thermal sensors inside the wood when we were molding it. And we would like adjust the program based on how much heat had been transition into the middle of the wood. And also we finally decided that afterwards when the pressing was complete, we should let them settle inside the press um, so that it just settles and if there's any moisture back somewhere inside there, it can have a little bit of time to come out of there because it's a, like a closed mold, which we can actually, yeah, well this is the, yeah, we'll come to a picture about the mold later. So this is the program that we more or less used for all of the uh, pieces that we will be testing this week in the program, uh, in that workshop. Uh, there were, here you can see the main points how it went. So first they were incubated in water, it was room temperature water for about four weeks. And then afterwards we had a hydraulic press that we preheated to 160 degrees Celsius, which was the optimal temperature for the lignin inside the wood to soften and then allow the molding of the wood. And we also changed this part where, so we uh, inserted the samples inside a cold mode and then inserted the cold mode inside the preheated press so that there would be no like harsh, um, like not too much climb in temperature or drop in temperature suddenly, but rather than that, we wanted to have like slow start with the, with the heat. Uh, they were held at five bars pressure, and we were looking at the temperature with that thermo thermometer. You can see here there's a small hole it has been drilled inside, and it goes to the about the middle of the piece. So we wanted to see like when does the water reach the boiling point temperature and really start to dry the wood from the insides. And uh, we kept it at five bars, so there wasn't really any like heavy molding at that point. It was mainly just moisture extraction and trying to dry the wood. Then we started, when the boiling point was reached, we started to apply more pressure, about two or three bars every minute until it reached a total of 30 or 35, 35 bars pressure. And uh, it was held there for about one hour, one and a half hour after that. 
to ensure that uh, like the transformation was complete, the physical compression. Uh, after that, the, after the one or one and a half hours, we reduced the pressure and let it settle in the, in the press before removing it. And finally, with the fine samples, when everything, all of this was done, we applied the surface treatment for those. So that's more or less, I don't know if that made any sense, <laughs> but that's more or less the program of the method that we used. Here is a picture, it's a little bit blurry because of the safety glass, but you can see the pressing phase, like maybe it makes sense now. These are the thermal elements that transfer the heat, and these little holes here are the, for the friction patterns, and uh, these are the pre-pressed, and this is after the pressing. So you can see that there's a pretty even compression all through here. It isn't any stronger on the surfaces than it is in the middle layer. So I think considering everything, we did pretty well. Uh, yeah. Uh, and can, you, can you go back? Yeah. Uh, a, so where is the gap? So in the beginning, before you start pressing, so that uh, how much uh, is, is that the thicker? Oh, the yeah. Room, so but they have the time compared to both. <coughs> both yeah. Do you remember the thickness? Yeah, yeah it's, uh, well, the plaques were from 32 to 35 millimeters. So, and the... Yeah, so that's this picture, yeah. Before yeah, and the height of the mold is, was it 28? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's was pretty good wood, considering. And you can see here, there are not a lot of cracks. A few can be seen, but compared to what we had earlier, when it was just completely broken, like anywhere you would look, there was cracks. So. I think considering the volume that we reduced it, considering that it was pretty well executed. And this blue line is the thermometer again. Yes, does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Uh, and the results that we made in the development was that uh, moisture extraction was, I think, much better and much more even than in the original program. So it was reduced from about 75 to 95%. Uh, percent. Okay, that's really high, everyone's thinking like, but it had been incubated, it, was, it had been in still water for four weeks, as I said, so there was a lot of free water, and like, <coughs> like no wood that you take, fresh cut wood, no wood would ever be that, like, wet, so. It was reduced to about 4 to 10 percent. We didn't quite get the, get where we wanted to be with the extraction in means of length because it was again like the ends of the board were a lot drier than in the middle parts. It was like, like here is that 4 to 10 percent, it was 4 percent in the ends but 10 in the middle. Uh, yeah, it says the, the here is the volume compression that we talked about just now. And uh, this coloration, well, you can see here, this is the original piece, and this is after the pressing. So there's a little bit of burning, and it has been changed in color, but not so much. It doesn't look like burnt wood anymore, at least to me. And uh, what I'm most, uh, most like happy about our development was this post-press transformation. So after we took them out of the press, there was no swelling very minimal. They just stayed in the shape to which we wanted to make them. It was a big problem earlier, but hopefully now it has been to some degree diminished. I think. Any questions? So how many pieces uh, by each uh, wood species you, you manufacture? Uh, we made 10 of each after the final testing so I don't know maybe we use like maybe eight pieces all together with the testing before we started manufacturing the ones that we have sent here now. So we made but we made ten final pieces for every ten of large, ten of five, ten of screws. Are you excited to see the results uh, uh, during this week so that uh, how yeah, could you wear? Yeah I'm there were some like 
when we were making, there was still some cracking and stuff like that, but we couldn't like at all see what had been going on there. So we heard some cracking noises maybe, but we couldn't like study it at all because we had to send them here intact. So at least for myself, I can say I'm pretty excited to see what had happened actually inside there, at least the compression even. You had a question. Uh, Question, what was the total duration of the compressed molding technology? Uh, it was about two hours or two and a half hours, but it was, like I said, it was not about set timing. So we just looked at the thermometer and we went on based on the heat transition. Mm -hmm. So it varied from one piece to another, but I can say it's pretty close to like two hours to a little bit more. Okay. Uh, I, I just have comments. But it was uh, old samples are much, much better than it was in the uh, during the first workshop. Except uh, even spruce was better, but spruce was also very cracked in the middle. Uh, I think I think we won't we won't be able to do anything with this because it relates to structure and porosity and uh, spruce, which is it's very hard to get water out in a yeah. coarse manner. So there's still we there's the problem that we talked about in Lofty that there is this like a vapor water vapor inside and there's a lot of pressure there. Still don't know how to eliminate that completely. We thought about drilling holes like straight through the plant, like lengthwise, yes. so the water could escape that way. And when you press it together, the holes are going to disappear because there's a lot of compression. So we thought about that, but then we thought that might also like affect the strength of the pieces. So. We did like this. Okay. 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 Okay.